Good morning, everyone. Um, my presentation is fairly brief and short. Uh, some of it, I thought it would be of particular interest for some of the utility companies here. And I just uh, briefly go over some of the research that I've done in the past few years in my lab, just in case you find any applications and you're interested. Um, I am the owner and the director of two labs, Energy Harvesting Laboratory and the Vibrations Laboratory um, at University of Waterloo, Mechanical and Mechatronics Engineering Department. Currently, I have six master's students, one PhD student, something about 12 undergraduate research assistants. Um, I've had previously research funding with different companies through NSERC Discovery Grant. I have uh, uh, some collaborative research going on with US Air Force, um, OCCR, Intract, and CRDs, and NSERC Engage um, are some of the funding that I've received in the past. Um, some recent research that we did that might be of particular interest for the utility companies here is a sensor that we designed for a startup company that was working in collaboration with uh, Ottawa Hydro Lab. Uh, the sensor uh, device is meant to measure uh, the current and the voltage uh, in the transmission lines um, in a non-contact base to detect any kind of uh, failure and power outage, and uh, it's part of the smart grid. Uh, the sensor is something about 50 times the one that we designed, uh, smaller and, light and lighter than available sensors in the market. And uh, the, basic, uh, the design um, basically um, employs electromagnetism as well as the piezoelectricity to measure the current in the wire, and it's uh, a real-time uh, data that we're measuring off that sensor. So for the next phase of the project, we're interested in research industrial collaborators that will help us with uh, uh, funding for uh, the energy harvesting design of the sensor, because the actual sensor, when it operates, it doesn't require any kind of battery, but when it's part of the smart grid and you want to send the uh, data that is real-time, uh, wirelessly, that requires battery. And um, to make the sensor completely self-contained, we have some interesting ideas that uh, we can steal energy from the actual wire without having to tap in the wire and then provide that for the sensor to send this data wirelessly. And again, that employs electromagnetism as well as uh, piezoelectricity. Some um, um, other research that we're currently uh, conducting at Energy Harvesting Laboratory in Mechanical Mechatronics Engineering Department, um, it's using different kind of materials like terphenol D, alloy 2605C, and any material that has something like a magnetostrictive properties um, to um, harvest energy from the wires. So if you have any kind of sensor already that it's not quite self-contained and it requires frequent ba battery replacements, we can sort of uh, produce a non or design a non-contact based mechanism that kind of can steal energy from the wires and the transmission lines again using terphenol D magnetostrictive materials as well as piezoelectrics, piezoelectrics to produce um, voltage that can be and charge that can be stored in supercapacitors for prolonging their battery lives or completely replacing them. So that's something that we are currently working on, and we have designed different kind of. Um, energy harvesting units. Some recent research that might not necessarily be of your interest, but I just go over it as one of the things that we've been focused on uh, for the past half uh, year and a half. Um, we have designed some, I don't know how many of you are familiar with macrofiber composite actuators, but they're extremely lightweight and they're very flexible, piezoelectric based, and they're not as uh, brittle as piezoelectric materials. So we have used them for controlling flatness and wrinkle control of um, some membrane structures for space application and uh, we were able to successfully design an actuator that has a very similar operation as um, the muscles in the human eye that control the flatness and the shape of the lens to enable us to view objects at different distances. So it's a macrofiber composite, very similar in terms of the geometry to a human eye uh, ciliary muscle actuator to control flatness of the membranes, and that's what we've been working on. Uh, some of the research that I have with um, um, space industry, uh, when the satellites go from sun to shade, they produce, uh, there's huge flux that they go through and as a result there's some thermal, uh, thermal news vibrations um, in the satellite that particularly for the new generation of the satellites which are inflatable are extremely important to be taken care of. So the reason that I say that because we mentioned something about electric vehicles research going on and so my main vibration, my main expertise is vibration. So definitely in terms of motor analysis, vibration suppression, vibration control and uh, model based design and control, I can be of help. 
uh, we've done a lot of uh, testing and modeling for different kind of inflatable spaces, structures, vibration and modal testing, as well as some research, uh, collaborative research that I have with a colleague of mine in uh, fluid mechanics um, sector in our department, uh, Professor Lian, that we try to um, look into new designs for the propellers for wind turbine that would uh, produce a smaller amount of acoustic energy for the low frequency range, which is a non-audible below 10 hertz that according to some of the survey, they have uh, made human beings that live in those areas sick. Even though they cannot be heard, they are below 10 hertz and they're in a non-audible range, but those uh, frequencies have shown people who live in those areas, they have uh, expressed similar symptoms, headache, dizziness, and those kind of things. Um, some research uh, that I have, um, it's currently going on with Arion Laboratory, again, um, it's in Waterloo and they make unmanned vehicle and uh, we are working on sort of like a passive design for suppressing vibration of the sensing unit of this small unmanned ve uh, vehicle unit and it's uh, the IMU unit, which is the main part that is troubled with vibrations. Um, in terms of um, sort of like a broad spectrum of the research that I can um, help with, um, and might be of your interest. As I said, uh, vibrations is my main area of expertise. I got my PhD from Center for Intelligent Material Systems and Structures at Virginia Tech. My advisor was Danny when he was like a big vibration shot. And um, I do a lot of um, research on different applications. If you're interested in vibration suppression, um, I can help. And also, if you want to harvest that vibration that is going to waste and produce electricity, that's also what I do. We develop different kind of technologies in our lab that we can produce up to hundreds of millivolts of milliwatts of power from different kind of uh, vibrations that are in the order of like um, anywhere from half an inch to two inches of amplitude and any frequency spectrum below 50 hertz. So it's pretty low frequency that is very prevalent in ambient. Uh, those kind of vibrations can be transformed in electricity and we have very small devices that in the order of like two, three centimeter that can produce up to 100 milliwatts of power. In terms of the application for the utility company, this one in particular doesn't require vibrations. As I said, we actually are stealing energy from the transmission lines themselves to produce uh, the voltage to read the sensors and the measurements of the sensors, sorry, and also um, provide the system with the energy that it require, it's, um, is required for sending data wirelessly. Um, so that was my short 10, seven minutes presentation. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to um, answer. Yes, we have actually done um, testing in harsh environments. In particular, the temperature testing was done all the way to minus 80 degrees. And uh, the sensor seems to have uh, a different sensitivity for very, very low temperatures, but it's calibratable. So if you have uh, basically a way to measure the temperature, it's not really a, up to minus 40 degrees, really, there's not much change. But from minus 40 to minus 80, it just starts showing the change. But that's calibratable. So we do see consistent behavior. So if you, as long as you have a certain distance from the wire, the temperature is really not an issue. It's more sensitive to the distance, the sensitivity of the sensor itself. And, um, and, and how, uh, how easy is it to install and how stable is it once it is installed? Um, it, it's extremely easy to install because the sensor itself basically has like a welded clamp to it that can be mounted and be secured in a box around the wire. So you can have something like a cylindrical box in that area and then you can basically make sure that um, the sensor itself is mounted originally parallel to the wire by making sure that the wire within that box doesn't move a lot. So if it's really, it's just the motion of the box, which is like a rigid body motion that the sensor moves with it. But in terms of really the wire changing distance and kind of like if the wind is coming through or something with respect to the sensor, by just having that box, that's, that's not a problem. It can easily be secure. That's, that's not an issue. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? So I'll be happy to discuss uh, the energy harvesting. Yes, please. Is it just installed on bare wires and not on cable? Uh, we have actually done the testing on, yeah, it, it, it was the covered cable that we did the testing for in auto hydro. Covered cable. covered cable, yes. But I don't think, I don't see any, for, I don't foresee any problem for a bare cable. Like, I would assume that if we had done the testing for the bare cable and we had, had to put, put the coating on, that would be more of an issue than the other way around. So we have already done the testing for the wire with the coating and everything has been calibrated for wires with coating. 
So but, is it a fully insulated cable? Yes, or, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, and the testing was actually done for a fully insulated cable also. So if you're interested in, in the energy harvesting side of it, uh, we're pretty much guaranteed for something in the order of like two centimeter by uh, one centimeter to get something in the, in the um, order of 100 milliwatts of power. And that should be sufficient for sending sensors, um, data from the sensor wirelessly. It's part of the smart grid. So Armageddon, you had an engage, you were working with the company yes. in Ottawa, and she'd like to continue this here in Waterloo. Yeah, I would like to do that. It can also be done through an engage and no cost to utility. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Thanks so much for your time.